Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottenen from the Flourish Academy where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to remove shadows from the background inside of Photoshop, but first, please check out our sponsor, YM Camera, for all of your photography needs. And if you are enjoying these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your photographer friends. It helps us to produce more videos. My friend Alicia from Moments Created Photography recently submitted this image. Obviously the issue is the shadow that is cast by the chair onto the background. Let me start by saying I am using Photoshop version 22.0.0 and I'm gonna start doing this I think in every video so that you can determine if your Photoshop looks different. Before I begin, there are probably about 55,000 different ways to remove this shadow. I'm just going to show you the way that works best for me because I believe it to be incredibly efficient. I'm going to begin by duplicating my background layer with a command or control J on the keyboard. Next, I am going to create a new blank layer by clicking the icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And what I would like to do is create a gradient to match this background and then mask it in. So I'm going to click the foreground color and then use the eyedropper tool to select a color at the top of the image, this lighter tan color. I'll say okay to that. Then I will click the background color and then I will select a color down here towards the bottom that is obviously darker and in the shadow. So you can see those two colors here. Next, I'm going to press G on my keyboard in order to access the gradient tool. Now you might have the paint bucket tool and if so, you would just have to hit shift G in order to grab the gradient tool. And you'll wanna make sure that transparency is turned off in your toolbar and you'll notice if I click down that I have foreground to background as my gradient. So there's just a few things to check if it's not working the way you anticipate. Now, if I click and drag just like this, you'll see that's what happens with the gradient. I'm going to undo that with a command or control Z. If I click up and down, you'll see you get this kind of gradient. But there's a few things about this tool that you need to know. Number one, if you click and drag just a very short distance, you will get a harder edge or a more severe transition from the foreground to the background. Let's undo that and drag it a little bit further and you'll see that there is now a larger area that is blended between those two colors. I'm going to undo that one more time, I believe, and now I'm going to hold down shift. That constrains this gradient so that it is perfectly vertical so I don't get any kind of strange, although I maybe could do it at an angle based on this light. That's okay, let's hold down shift and I'm going to click right about here and down to here and see how that, okay, that looks pretty good. I won't know for sure until I apply the selection. So let's just hide that layer by clicking the visibility icon. Let's select layer one. And what I would like to do is select this area where the shadow is so that we can just place that gradient there using a layer mask. I am going to grab the quick selection tool and you can press W on your keyboard, but you'll wanna make sure that you have the quick selection tool and not the magic wand tool. Next, I'm going to just click and drag. By the way, you could make that bigger with your right bracket, but it grabbed everything pretty quickly and pretty well because that's the area I wanted to select. But I see this outlet and I don't know, do I wanna cover that? Do I wanna leave it? I actually think I wanna cover it. So I need to add that into the selection. So I'm going to hold down shift and click inside of the, oh dear. And now I got more of her, in which case I need to hold down alt or option on the keyboard in order to drag and deselect the chair as well as her arm and her skirt. I'm still holding down alt or option. It's giving me the minus in my cursor so that I am deselecting this area. So see how I'm going around her hair? I don't want that covered. I don't want this chair covered. I don't want this area covered. I'm just clicking and dragging. And I fully understand that there may be some areas that I have to touch up. 
but that actually looks like a pretty good selection. Now I am going to click on layer two to select it. Let's turn it back on. And at the bottom of your layers palette, see I still have this selection. I'm going to click the mask tool, add layer mask. And when I do that, it automatically gives me that mask. So you can see the before and after. That looks pretty good. Let's just toggle that a few times so we can make sure. I can see a couple of areas that I need to work on right next to her hair and up here. Let's go ahead and zoom in with a command or control plus on the keyboard. And let's go up to this area. I can see that that edge is missing. So I have a layer mask. I'm just going to press B to grab my brush tool and I'm gonna make sure that it is set to black to conceal. And I'm actually, you see this opacity? I'm gonna take it down a little bit and I'll show you why. I wanna just build this up a little bit so it doesn't have this really harsh edge to it. And if I did it too quickly with just a 100% black brush, it, it wouldn't look as good. So I'm just clicking and I'm gonna look down at her hair. This area could use a little bit of help. So I wonder if we use our, let's grab a white brush. What we wanna do, I'm just gonna flip those swatches with an X on the keyboard. What we're gonna do is we want that to blend in a little bit better. So let's turn the opacity down on this. We have a white brush. That part of the mask is black and I can just start kind of brushing over that to get that edge to blend in without taking out her hair. Okay, that's gonna take a little bit of finesse on my part and some time, but trust me, it will work. And if I go back and look at the overall before and after, I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I would suggest is maybe adding some noise to this layer, layer two, to make sure that there isn't any banding when it is printed. If it's printed at a normal size, it would be good, but sometimes if you go up larger, you could get banding in the printing. I don't see any banding, so I'm not going to worry about it. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.